Though you guys seem to really like my advertising visual effects tutorial inside of Blender, so I decided to make another one and have some fun with it. Like always, you can download everything I use down in the description below. So the first thing we want to do is open up FSpy, link download that is down below. That's going to help us rotate and actually create uh, the scene with the correct focal length and everything. So let's just select a frame from our frame sequence. I did convert it to a PNG sequence, uh, just so it's a little bit easier to work with. Let's go ahead and select a frame. I'm doing 188 because I found that that kind of gives me the most uh, kind of view in our scene. Let's go ahead and dim image off. And you can see that we have a lot of nice lines to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up my Y axis. So grab this green line. Let's just set that to kind of be that line on the billboard there. And then the other green line, I'm just going to put up at the top. We do want to try to make this as accurate as possible. So right there is looking good. And then of course I do want to have the X axis and just keep in mind that we want to have those lines kind of be perpendicular to each other. So we actually have uh, some nice lines in the actual uh, side of the buildings here. So I'm going to grab this line. Let's go ahead and line this up. Let's say like right there, uh, kind of using that line of that building as a reference. And then let's get this uh, line up here. And we'll just use the shadow line right there. Let's uh, change the XY grid for on and just make sure that it looks good. And you can see that matches my scene perfectly well. Uh, let's go ahead and just put that right on the bottom edge. Uh, that's where our uh, origin is going to be inside Blender. So Control S, save the project in its new location. So save that. And then we can go inside of Blender now. And you do need the importer add-on installed. So preferences, add-ons, install. And then you just want to locate that zip. And it should pop up with this file. You just want to make sure that's checked. And once you have that, we can go up to file and then import and fspy. Locate wherever you saved your fspy project and then import that in. And it's created a new camera inside of our project. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these objects that Blender automatically came with. And then if we want to go ahead and add a new mesh plane, and I just want to check the edge of our actual uh, kind of sign up here. So I'm going to rotate that and then G uh, shift X, I believe. Yeah. So just rotate that up there. The most important thing that we want to know is we want uh, to see that our plane is, you know, going along the bottom and the top of our screen. Uh, so you can see mine is actually following it pretty well here. It's not that important for this tutorial since this is a stationary shot, but again, it's uh, just kind of rule of thumb. You want to have that as accurate as possible. That's going to help us actually model out the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go into tab, go into edit mode, hit two to go to edge select. Let's bring this edge out. So G Y just move that out here for now. It's roughly right there uh, and if you think of the screen it's basically uh, forming a right angle triangle here and then uh, it's basically just curving that in and so what we can do is first of all let's bring this down and just fill out the bottom of our screen there as we'll notice that the top of our screen uh, remains flat all the way throughout so we can actually use that to kind of model out the other side right here so let's go ahead and e extrude that in the x direction so hit x and you'll see that it's not aligned at all. So let's go ahead and select the, this face. Then G, Y, move that over. And we basically just want to align the top right here. So you'll see the line is basically aligned now. So that's how far out it's going to be. Let's go ahead and bring this edge. So G, Y, I'm just going to, or sorry, X. Let's bring that back right there. And then, of course, we do need to get that curve in. So let's select this edge, Control B to bevel. I'm just going to scroll my scroll wheel up right there. And then we just need to bevel this uh, roughly right there. You'll see that the bottom of our screen is looking a little nice now. Um, I will still notice that there's a little bit of a line here. So I'm going to Alt select the bottom and then G Z. Just move that down a little bit. Of course, play around with your scene and get a model that uh, roughly follows the screen as closely as you can. Since that's going to uh, really help out the realism of the shot. Okay, so let's go ahead and I want to right click Shade Smooth. Let's name this the screen. And then what we want to do is go ahead and model out the room inside of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead, shift D, duplicate that, right click to place it back. And then let's go ahead and hide our original screen since we only want to be working with our new screen now. Uh, I'm just going to name this object room so we can uh, differentiate the two. Uh, and I want to go ahead and model out the room. So I found the easiest way for me to do this. I'm not a modeler. So, of course, play around with, with it uh, for whatever you want for your scene. I'm going to select this edge over here, E, X, move that over there. Let's go to the side view and just line up those two edges. So roughly around there. And then if I select the other edge and hit F, that'll create a new face. 
And then of course I do kind of want a roof and a floor of our room. So I'm going to go ahead and select this top one, hit F. And then again, Alt click the bottom one and hit F as well. So now we have our little room and uh, you will notice that it's shaded very weirdly right now. Uh, and so to fix that, we can go to the data, data properties, go down to normals and auto smooth that. And now that's kind of fixed uh, some of the weird shading issues that we had. Uh, so now, uh, since we have the original screen, if you remember, if I unhide that now uh, and select that, we still have the screen here. So in our room object, let's go ahead and delete that part of the screen. So I'm going to face select this and hold control and click the other face. And that'll just select all of these things. Then let's X uh, delete the faces. And now we have the uh, room and then the screen kind of separated from each other. And so that's going to be really useful to kind of composite those in separately. Let's go back into the camera view. We will see kind of the bottom of our room uh, object right here. And so we don't really want that uh, to get rid of that. Let's go ahead and go back into edit mode. And then I want to select basically all of the kind of edges on the front here. And I want to hit E to extrude that down on the Z axis. And so now that's basically extruded that down. And so what we're going to do with that is uh, we can still see that it's shaded. Uh, we need to actually set that to be a holdout material. And so before we do anything, let's go ahead and set up our render properties to match our scene. So I'm going to come up to the render properties. You can work inside of Eevee. It's kind of a similar workflow. So depending on what you want to actually show, it might be better for you to stick in Eevee. But I'm going to be switching to Cycles. Uh, Denoise on the viewport, but not on the render. I'm going to set this to be a 256 for now. And then the viewport uh, 64. Uh, and then let's change the device to GPU compute just so we can work uh, super fast. And then what we want to go ahead and do is we want to set this to be our holdout material. So let's add a new material. Uh, now this first material that we add is basically going to be the entire material of the entire object. So uh, for now, since there are more faces inside, I'm just going to leave this as the room uh, material. And then we actually need to make a new material, and this one is going to be our holdout. So let's just name that accordingly. Um, and then when we have that, we can go back inside Veta mode, hit all these faces again. So again, just control click that to select all those. And you can see it's automatically set it to be our room texture as before, but we do want this to be holdout. And if we have these faces select, we can uh, hit assign. And now if we select each individual face, this one uh, is holdout. And then this one back here is room. And so now we have two materials for the same object. And so what we can do now is I want to come down to the holdout material. Let's come out of edit mode. And then I want that to be, instead of printable BSDF, we can set that to, be, of course, be holdout. And now if we Z uh, go to render view, we'll notice that everything behind our holdout section isn't being rendered right now. There's a little bit of a weird shading issue, and that's actually because we don't have uh, the film transparency in our scene. So let's go up to the render properties, uh, go down to film, and then hit transparent. And now that's uh, fixed it a little bit. So you, now you can see that we only see the screen side and we no longer see our floor. So that's really cool. Um, I do want to go ahead and go up to my camera that it created, go to background images, and I'm just going to change my opacity up. And also now is a pretty good time to go ahead and import some lighting in our scene. So I'm going to go up to the world properties, go to color and change that to environment texture. And then I'm just going to open up the HRI that I have linked down below. Okay, so let's just click that, open the image. And now we actually have some lighting in our scene. Uh, so now we are actually ready to play around with the scene. And so for my actual shot, I imported in a train model and then actually animated that and stuff. Uh, I'm not really going to be doing that today since I did use uh, paid add-ons and everything. And I'm really leaving this open to you guys. I want to kind of just show you guys how to get the screen kind of coming out and then moving down. And so let's go ahead and set that up. So for the room texture in here, uh, let's go and bring another uh, kind of window out here. Then go down to the shader editor hit in to hide this little uh, panel over there. And then let's go ahead and mess around with some of the interior room. So I'm just going to go to slot uh, one, which is our room. And then let's add a checker texture in here. We're just going to have a little bit of fun with it. Place that in there. So now we have it textured in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to tab, hit A, U, and then smart UV project. Um, just so it, you know, projects it actually didn't change. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it looks fine uh, depending on what you actually need. I'm just going to mess around with the scale a little bit. Get something like that. That looks pretty cool. And then let's uh, play around with the roughness. Maybe move that down a little bit. Uh, make the metallic up. Just so we kind of have like a cool little room in here. I'm actually going to change the that up just a hair. 
and then we'll just play around with it like that so now we have like kind of a little bit of a reflective kind of checkerboarded room going on there so pretty cool effect and of course like all my tutorials i've been doing recently uh let's go ahead and add suzanne so shift a mesh monkey and then let's just place her kind of in here and we'll even do something cool with her and make her kind of act like she's popping out of the screen a little bit so let's just move her on the negative 90 degrees so that she's kind of facing out here um so for her let's go ahead and just make her i kind of want to make her like a gold material so let's see if we can do that uh yellow color metallic all the way up let's go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier on her so she's more smooth uh so we'll do like a three uh, so now it's a little bit more smooth let's change the roughness down and so now we have like kind of a cool little gold color here of course you play around with it um I, again for my scene i did do a train kind of advertisement type thing uh but this is where you can really get creative so just have some fun with it now that we have all those materials correct let's go ahead and make the material of our actual screen so i'm going to come out here and uh we want to select this let's add a new material just going to name this screen and then for this screen, I want it to be this black color. Maybe not all the way back black, maybe like a little bit of gray. And then I do want the roughness to be down. So something like that. And then we'll do the specular down like just a little bit uh, because some of the highlights are a little harsh over there. So that's looking pretty good. Of course, you can play around with the lighting of our scene. So let's go to the world properties. Uh, we want to have the Node Wrangler add-on installed. So if you come up to Edit Preferences, it comes automatically uh, with the Blender. Uh, honestly, it should be a default uh, kind of enable uh, enabled add-on right now. But uh, you just want to make sure that this is kind of selected. Then what we can do is hold Control and T to add a texture coordinate and mapping node. And we want to go ahead and play around with the uh, Z rotation just to get a kind of cool result here. Uh, if you want it kind of shaded or not, it's really up to you. I kind of want it like half and half maybe. I'm going to play around with the Z, maybe even a little bit with the Y. Something like that. That looks pretty cool. Actually, I want to get rid of that line over there. There we go. So uh, here's, you know, the numbers I used. Of course, play around with it yourself. But let's go ahead and save that. And then uh, for the screen, uh, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to animate this to kind of, you know, reveal the actual, um, you know, monkey and everything behind it. So what we want to do is I want to go ahead, uh, we'll give it like 30 frames where it's just kind of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I to set a location keyframe. And then I want the screen to basically uh, kind of go backwards. And so let's G and then Shift Z kind of move that backwards. And it depends how much you want it to move uh, for you. Uh, this is looking pretty good for me. This is kind of where I want it to stop there. So again, I just location. And then of course we want to add one more keyframe. Uh, I'm just going to go you know, to frame 60, go G, Z, move that down there, and then I, location. So now we basically have the screen kind of going backwards and then revealing it down. It actually goes down a little too fast for me, so I'm going to bring this uh, frame way out so it increase, uh, increases the time it takes for it to go down. That looks pretty good. Uh, what you could also do is hit A, select all of these, and if you want to play around with some of the inter interpolation modes, I actually find that some of them um, are pretty cool. So if you want, for example, if you want it to bounce, so if we select bounce, you'll see that it basically bounces uh, the screen up and down. So it's really just whatever type of effect you want. I actually like the default one. So I'm just going to go back to interpolation mode uh, Bezier right there. And so now we have that animation. Of course, we do want it to close at the end. And so I'm basically just going to copy and paste the keyframes that we have in the reverse order. So let's copy and paste this right there. I'm going to grab this keyframe, place that right there. And then, of course, we need to grab this, copy and paste that over there. And so now we have the screen basically uh, putting back into place at the very end. And so, of course, play around with the animation, get something that looks pretty cool. Um, I will say if you guys do do anything kind of on your own uh, with this or any of my other tutorials, I'd love to see them. So if you do post them to YouTube, make sure to tag me or send me a comment on my channel so I can check them out. Anyways, let's go ahead and play around with some of the animation for the actual monkey. I want it to constantly be rotating uh, kind of on its axis. So I'm going to come over to the object properties and then you'll see all of these settings over here. Uh, if we play around with some of these, you'll see uh, this is the Z rotation. 
Uh, and so what I want to do is I kind of want the monkey to be just rotating on the Z axis constantly. And I could, uh, you know, say animation keyframes for that. But what I want to do instead is I want to go ahead and set an expression. And so if you ha uh, type in hashtag and then hit frame, uh, that'll give the frame number. And so if we go and play that, that's way too fast for what I want. And so I'm just going to divide that number. So let's hit divided by 10. Let's uh, decrease it by 10. And so that's much slower, much cooler effect. I'm actually going to take that number and uh, make that the inverse. So I'm just going to make negative frame. And so now it's actually uh, rotating in the opposite direction. And uh, that's, you know, much cooler for me. So now that it's rotating, let's actually have it come out a little bit. So uh, right here, I'm going to set I a location keyframe. And then we'll say like frame 110. Uh, we're going to have the monkey actually kind of come out of the screen. And this only works at this specific camera angle. You know, if you were actually standing kind of like over here in real life and looking at the screen, it wouldn't really give the same effect because, again, it is being projected on a screen. So you do have to keep that in mind. Um, let's go ahead and shade this smooth. I'm going to go hit uh, G and then Y or sorry, X. Just move her out a little bit. The one thing we do want to keep in mind is that we don't really exit the bounds of our actual screen. And so I'm just going to move her like out there, right there. And so you'll see the edge. Uh, we'll never kind of uh, interact with the edge here. Let's go ahead and I set a location keyframe. And I just want to make sure you will see that uh, the ear kind of pokes out here. So we actually did it a little bit too far. So let's go back and I want to G, Y, or X. Move that back just a little bit. Then uh, again, make sure you set a location keyframe. And now you'll see that it doesn't, uh, you know, go outside of the bounds of our actual screen. And so again, we just want to kind of reverse that effect. So, and so the screen closes right there. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste this frame there. And then I also want it to go back to its original position before the frame closes. So like right there is where I want the uh, frame to go back or the monkey to go back. And so basically as soon as it opens, it kind of goes out a little bit, you know, doing its little twirl and then it will go back in before the screen closes back. And so that is looking pretty cool. That's all I'm really going to be doing for this uh, tutorial because I don't want to get too complicated and everything uh, since there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, and so let's go ahead and save our project and now we need to do some compositing and so we can come up here to the compositing tab if we hit use nodes we have this render layers to our composite and then with the node wrangler add-on we can hold shift control and click and add a viewer node nothing is being viewed and that's actually because we haven't rendered out anything so let's come to the middle here let's go to like 130 and then uh, render out a image Okay, so here's our rendered image. One thing I do notice is that we actually still see the screen down here. So that is a super easy fix. Let's come out to layout. And then you'll notice that we have this holdout uh, kind of material down here. It actually doesn't go to the very bottom of the screen. So let's just go ahead and have a uh, select this bottom kind of edge over here. G, Z, move that down. And now it shouldn't be rendered. Um, so that was my mistake. Next thing we need to do is go back to compositing. Let's go ahead and combine the footage back on uh, the bottom of our actual uh, CGI. So if I add a movie clip node, I want to come up here and then open up the image sequence that we have. So once you have your image sequence, let's hit A to open the clip. And so now we need to use a alpha over to combine those back. It's basically just uh, combining them like uh, any other kind of CG program would uh, as a layer. And so let's just combine them like that. And then if we shift control click like there, uh, we can see that we have our CG actually in the environment and it's looking pretty cool. Now, one thing uh, we will notice is if I go uh, to the movie clip and select that, we do have some people standing right here that would actually block it. And then we also have the kind of this lamp post that would be blocking it too. And you can get real into the details and stuff. Like uh, for example, this lamp post in the back, you can also do that, but I'm not really gonna be uh, nitpicking uh, all of that. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get some of those out. Now for the people, um, I went ahead and went inside of After Effects and actually used the Rotor Brush tool to actually um, get a holdout. And so I'm not going to be going over how to actually roto out them. I went ahead and already did that myself. So you can go ahead and download um, that holdout uh, video that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and shift A, add a uh, new movie clip node. And then let's just open up that movie clip. Okay, so here is the holdout. We're going to open that up. 
And if I view that, it's basically just a black and white image of our um, people right here. It's not the best. I could have uh, made it a little bit better because uh, some of the hair and stuff were giving me problems. If you, you know, zoom in here, I try to do the best uh, for the hair. But of course, if you do did want to make this uh, kind of professional looking, you'd spend a lot more time on the actual, um, you know, mask section. Let's come, uh, I'm going to set this uh, kind of image to be our factor of our alpha over. And so what that's done is it's basically taken all of our white uh, pixels down here and put it to our, uh, you know, applied that on top of the alpha over. And so that's actually the uh, wrong effect that we want. We actually want to invert our image. So I'm going to go ahead and invert the color there. And so now that's doing the right thing. It's basically just masking out the people over here. Uh, and so that was the easy part since I already really did that for you guys. Now for the poll, we actually do need to add a mask inside of Blender. So don't worry, that's actually super easy inside of Blender. So let's come up here to plus VFX and let's go to the masking section. And we again just need to open up our clip. It's uh, this PNG sequence. And then what we want to go ahead and do, let's go to the first frame. And before I do anything, I do want to like track this because there's ever so slightly a little bit of movement, um, like the wind either affecting the camera or the pole itself. So I do want to kind of track that first. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the tracking section. And I'll, uh, all these settings are fine here since, again, we're not really moving throughout the scene. So it's going to be a super fast track. Let's go ahead and prefetch the footage uh, just so it prefetches all of the frames in our cache. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and control click this little white dot here. And that's going to be uh, what we actually track. And then if we hold control T, that'll start tracking, tracking it forward. And it actually tracked it all the way to the end. And so now that we have that little dot tracked, we can actually parent that to the mass that we're going to create. So let's go back to the masking section. And then first thing we need to do is go ahead and add a new mask. So click that up here. You can, of course, name it whatever you want. And then in uh, like in the tracking section, we need to hold control and click to actually start making our mask. Now I'm gonna do a super kind of rough masking job. Of course, uh, for you, you would want to really go in and make sure the mask is, you know, exactly kind of lining up uh, to the pixels of the actual scene. Okay, and so once you're at the very end, let's just connect them back up. So click that, and now we have our completed mask. Again, you do kind of want to spend some more time inside of your masking than me because uh, mine looks very ugly, uh, and I'm missing a lot of the sections. But of course, just play around with it yourself. And so now that we have this, you'll notice that it's not tracked through our scene. And if I kind of zoom in here, you'll see that bouncing I was talking before. So we want to try to mimic that as closely as possible. So in the first frame, we're going to select A to select all of our points. And then if we uh, shift select that, we can go ahead and control P and that'll parent those two uh, to the tracker. And so now you can see our mask is moving along with the tracker and bouncing. Uh, so it's giving us a pretty good track um, and mask for that. Now that we're done with that, uh, we can go back to the compositing section. We want to go ahead and add uh, that in, of course. So let's shift A, add our mask node. Just going to select that right here. And then uh, you could use motion blur, but since it's not moving all around a lot, I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, and now we need to combine that. I'm going to use a mix node instead of an alpha over. So mix right there. And let's just place those two right there. And the reason I'm using a max is because if we actually view that, uh, we'll see that we have our... Uh, lamp post, but we actually don't have our people anymore and that's actually because by default It's using kind of the alpha and the mix operation. We actually want that to be a add operation So that'll add the two together and so now we have uh, both of our mask in Let's place that into the invert color again because uh, we want this uh, You know section to be black and everything else to be white and so now with that plugged into our alpha over finally we have both the people and the actual lamp post cut out uh, now let's do some super final touches uh, to actually blend in some of the shot. Uh, now what I notice is we have a lot of noise. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to come over to the view layer properties, go down, check denoising data, and then I'll add some new nodes over to our render layers nodes. Go ahead and add a denoise node. Plug that there. I need the denoising normal and the normal and the albedo into the albedo. And so now let's go ahead and render out that image. Okay, so that looks much, much better. Uh, you will see that we have some lines kind of on our mask and everything. And so let's uh, try to feather that just a little bit. Uh, we have this feather section. I actually believe you have to come up to the mask section. And then if we come down here, uh, you want to make sure you have every uh, thing selected. So hit A. And then we can scale the feather. And I just want to kind of scale that down just a little bit. You can see these green lines are basically scaling that down. And so I just want like a little bit. You'll see 
uh, right there. That looks pretty all right. Let's see how that looks in the compositing section. So that actually didn't fix it. Let's go back to the masking section. I honestly might just pull... Let's go to the first frame. I might just pull this kind of over a little bit just so we don't see kind of that lighting again. Uh, this is where I would take it in another program and do it there. But this is uh, a pretty e like easy workflow um, inside Blender to get a pretty all right result. Let's go ahead and just blur it a little bit. So Gaussian, going to go to fast blur and let's just blur it like literally like let's see five pixels. That actually might be too much. Um, and so we'll see that. Yeah, so that's a little too much. So I actually just blurred it uh, one pixel and that seemed to kind of get some of the lines out. So that's what I'm going to stick with for this. Uh, what I do want to do is kind of match the black levels. They actually don't look too, too bad right now. Uh, but what I could do is I'm going to go ahead and add a color balance node. Set this to be offset power slope. And then I'm just going to brighten them ever so slightly. Because you got to remember in real life it would actually be on a screen. And so, of course, um, you could, like, do a screen uh, blend, um, but there, uh, in our original thing, there were actual ads on here, so that, that won't really work. So, forget I said that. Let's just uh, kind of brighten this up a little bit. Okay, so you can see uh, adding this node basically just brightens up uh, some of the black levels just a little bit. All I did there was just play around with the power. And so, of course, uh, let's try to blur this uh, matching the actual scene. Uh, it's not going to be super big of a blur, but I'm kind of just looking over here trying to match that. Let's just go ahead, Shift-A, add a blur node. Just going to place that there. And I'm going to make that... We'll say a five for now again um just test that again we don't want too much of a blur um like that might be a little too too much so let's actually set it down to like a two pixel and that should be good enough okay so that matches the blur of it a little bit better of course you can play around add some more nodes um i know it's a little disorganized up here but that's the basic kind of workflow um let's come back out to the layout tab uh, and I do want to go ahead and come over here to the render properties. I want to set motion blur on. And then we can go ahead. Uh, let's decrease some of the light paths. And just set all those to like four. So just drag, select that. Set that to four. And that shouldn't affect our scene that much, I believe. Um, since we don't have that many bouncing. Yeah, looks pretty good. Let's do fast GI approximation just to get some nice render speed. Let's set this down to two for now. Uh, and if I turn that off and on, you'll see that it doesn't really affect our scene, but it'll save us some performance times. And then let's turn the refractive. Uh, we can leave the reflective caustics on, but reflect it, refractive we don't really need. And then finally, all that we have to do is set up our output property. So come over here. Depending on how long it's going to export, I'm actually going to save this as a PNG sequence. Just in case Blender crashes, I don't want to have lost all my progress. And I can just reset the frame number down here. So, of course, save that in whatever kind of file location that you want. Uh, and then I'm going to save it as PNG. Uh, you can also do uh, e EXR, which is kind of like the industry standard if you want. Uh, it'll save some uh, kind of... Um, color data and all that stuff and be a little more high definition, but of course how uh, higher file size uh, We're not gonna be rendering anything with RGB or sorry with alpha So we can just set it to the RGB section uh, Then compression down to zero and once you have all of those kind of set up We can go ahead and go to render and render the animation Okay, so here's the final result that we got. Of course, you can play around with it on your own and get a really cool result. Uh, like, for example, in my original shot, I had a train uh, going past the camera. And so it's basically the same workflow, uh, give or take a few things. Uh, but anyways, I hope you learned a lot and got a pretty cool result that you can apply to your own uh, visual effects. But anyways, it'd mean a lot to me if you could consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next tutorial.